Hey guys, Wages World here, August 29th, 2020, coming at you with a short video, guys. Um, I just want to show you this geomagnetic storm that we're going into right here. Um, this wasn't completely unexpected, but it was kind of, uh, and you'll understand here in a second. We were expecting to get a higher wind stream, but as of late, guys, when we say that, we've been wrong quite a few times. Um, it just ends up not being as strong as what it looks like it's going to be, Okay. But this time, it most certainly is a geomagnetic storm. So, you can see where it says G1. It's a very minor storm. What can we expect during that kind of a thing? Increased auroras and probably upticks in hurricanes, not hurricanes, but uh, earthquakes and uh, volcano activity, seismic activity, basically. Um, and a few other things that's probably really not going to bother anybody. Now, if we get up higher than that, yes, we can have other issues, Okay. Radio propagation, all that, all those things start falling into place also, okay? Um, for people that do the ham, ham radio stuff, emergency first responders, they use those. Um, so they always watch th this kind of activity because, you know, on the day side, it most certainly will affect it. Um, but as you can see here, we came into the stream and then it just shot straight up. Took a pretty, I guess we took a pretty decent hit there. Then it came back down, and I've been watching this all night, and it kind of stayed here, and I thought, well, maybe it'll just stay there. Well, it's bumping back up. Now, we're going to see if it, you know, does more. I look for it to at least stay at this condition level. Um, we could actually even get bumped up even higher than a G1 if these condi conditions continue for a, a lengthy period of time. Um, and it's what we look, it looks like that's what's going to happen, but... Um, it's, it would still have to be a little bit more intense stuff to get us up into higher storm levels. Um, you can see here the yellows, the velocity, the orange is the density. Nothing way out of bounds, okay? Um, it is over 500 uh, kilometers per second. Now, that's, that's significant because it's usually about the, the time we draw the line of what's normal and what's above normal conditions. Anything over 500 typically will give us some action, okay? This is the end little model, and it has uh, moved up some here. And what we're looking at is the three to 700 range. What does that mean? Well, sometimes when we look at this thing, it'll be, it's usually like three to five, okay? Right now, they've got it up to 700 because those are the conditions they're expecting us to experience, okay? um and for quite some time so right now we're about here in the time timeline and it tries to predict like five days out in front of us now i don't trust it out past a couple days because when it when it gets more data in it it will update so it looks like we're going to stay there for a minute okay so with that being said we could get up into storm level again even higher than a g1 if it does continue like this um, there's no way to say 100% on anything, but it does look like we're in for some geomagnetic activity, at least for a few days. Uh, Aurora photographers are going to really love that. Okay, something that's kind of bothering me here, guys. Um, this is Lasco C2. And you guys, in my last video, I showed you guys this. Okay, these are a couple CMEs that happened on the 27th. Now, I'm not sure exactly if these things are coming at us, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. I don't think this one especially isn't coming near us. This one may give us a glancing blow if it is facing firing kind of that way. Because this is a, this is our point of view. You know, the Earth, the Earth would be here with that satellite. Um, it's not a side view here on this one. Uh, but something else I want to show you as of note is that Sun Diver. Okay, I, I, I mentioned it in my last video, but it, it's, it's completed its trek to the Sun. <laughs> it is not in existence anymore. Um, so yeah, I don't think that was any kind of shot of anything, getting shot at the sun or anything like that. Um, you know, we see that this is a classic, you know, sun diver. There's really no question about this, this one. It's moving fast and you can tell because the tail is long and that means it's experiencing, uh, higher solar wind because it's getting closer to the sun and it's moving faster, and, and we would expect it to move faster the closer it got to the sun. And guys, if you remember, you know, things slingshot around the sun. So that means it gets faster. Even our, park, our Parker SP probe, 
the satellite they put out there to kiss the sun is what they said. It does that too. You can watch it. You see the track of it will move slow, so it finally starts speeding up when it's in movement. And when it gets real close to the sun, you'll see it. I mean, it'll fling around. It's pretty fast. So the comments are the same thing. It's just a big ball of ice getting blown back. So in my opinion, that's no sort of shot at anything. <laughs> it looks just like every other uh, sun diver I've ever seen, pretty much. And it did show up on Stereo A. But we got these right here, right, guys? So we go to the next day, which is the 28th, and this is what we get. We get two hours of data, and it was first thing yesterday morning, and then we get nothing else after that. Now this is actually a third CME, because I've I, I seen it on SDO. And I'll show it to you here in a minute, but what bothers me is this is on the SOHO. And, you know, that satellite's out in front of the Earth also looking at the sun. Then we have SDO looking at the sun in front of us also both of those satellites miles and miles apart from each other they're not updating right now neither one of them now we're getting the solar storm sometimes they will kick into safe mode to protect itself they don't have a magnetosphere to protect them like we do so sometimes these things are programmed to go into safe mode when they start experiencing certain conditions so both of these satellites may be doing that because we are getting a solar storm hitting Earth. Um, but it is kind of odd that they both just no data. And I'll show you something else here too that's really, really interesting that plays along with what I just said. Okay guys, this is the CME tracker. Now you guys know I take you guys here all the time. When we get CMEs, this is really, it gives us a more definite answer if, this, if those are going to hit us. Well, where's the CMEs at? They're not there. If, and this thing only updates when it sees a CME. So yesterday when I looked at this thing, it had a small CME from like the 23rd it was showing. And it was, it may, it was really, really weak. It looked like it was going to go south of us anyway. Um, if we were going to experience any conditions from that, it would have been very, very minor. Okay. But what's crazy is that that updated on the 23rd. Now follow me here on August 23rd. So if it showed you when that CME started and it would go forward a certain amount of days, usually like seven days, because it tries to show you where that ends up in our inner solar system, okay? It's trying to predict what the conditions are going to be. Well, then why we're not seeing those CMEs? Well, why did they post a time lapse that started on the 31st of July? And goes to like the 9th or 10th of August. Two weeks ago, guys. Just yesterday I looked at this and the starting point was on the 23rd of August. So why are they going backwards? It's really strange. At the same time that we're getting these bigger CMEs and a solar storm. And two other satellites are now not updating. Too much to be a coincidence, guys. My opinion, but that's what I'm going to say. Because it is. I can't tell you exactly what's going on. My guess is something's there that they don't really want us to see. Or, you know, freak out about or whatever else. And I ain't trying to scare nobody. But that is very, very uh, odd. We got three or four different tools. Not updating. And then you got this stupid thing. That reverted back two weeks before current time frame. Why? <laughs> it's just too strange, man. And again, this is the one we use to see what the CME is even coming at us. So this is the one that would show us if we should be paying attention here in the next two or three days. It's really, really strange. And I don't want to say that I'm concerned because I'm not really concerned. But my, my senses are telling me that I need to pay attention right now. Uh, that's just me, guys. And, I, and again, I don't say that lightly. You guys know I don't. I wouldn't say that unless I've seen all this stuff happening at once. So we really just going to have to pay attention here for the next few days or whatever's going on. Hopefully this thing will update and we'll get a more precise direction of those CMEs. Um, you know, if I, if I had to answer if we were going to get hit by one of those CMEs, CMEs right now, I would probably say yes. Because then they're just not wanting us to see it. It could be big enough or more dense enough that we, we could have like electrical issues or something. I don't know. 
Um, but I, I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying all this other stuff combined, when you look at the whole picture here, it, it's really odd. But I, like I said, I want to reiterate that those two satellites, SOHO and SDO, <laughs> are out in front of us. Okay? So it's experiencing pretty much the same conditions as Earth. But it don't have the protection of the magnetosphere like we do. So they do go into safe mode. So that could be what's going on. I want to make sure that everybody understands that. But all this stuff wrapping up in together, it definitely we're going to have to watch it. Okay, guys, geoelectric field model is showing that solar storm. Okay, um, this is what we would expect to see during the solar storm. Nothing crazy, but it is increased activity. And you're going to notice that it does get uh, more bright at the top, and that's what we would expect to see because a lot of that energy does come in through the poles. Um, and you can see it creep down. So, you know, that's it also kind of shows you in a roundabout way why we get auroras up there. Um, that's It's basically showing you kind of <laughs> the same thing. So if it gets really, really intense down this way, they could see auroras down that far. Um, you know, it's not unheard of, right? Uh, it happens a few times a year usually. They call it getting down into mid-latitudes because it's a, closer to the equator. But typically we don't, see auroras unless we're getting a, a pretty decent shot of solar wind uh, you know to bring the auroras down to mid latitudes or a CME or a solar flare or something like that I guess could help cause it too okay guys just to show you what I'm talking about about being on two different satellites and not updating let me show you this okay um, what I'm gonna do is if you look up here that's SDO, right? This one's SOHO. Where are they located? Well, they are located. If the Earth is here, SDO is kind of here, and SOHO would be kind of over here. All right? So they're, they're out in front of us. So they're going to experience the same, basically the same space weather conditions. But what's interesting is, like I just said, this thing hasn't updated since uh, the end of the day on the 28th. So it's now 9, 10 hours, no data on SOHO. Um, it actually goes back even further if you go look at SEEDS, but this was showing some data during the 28th, but SEEDS wasn't. Now this here is SOHO, and that is the most recent we get from SOHO. Or SDO, I'm sorry. It'll go to the 28th here, and um, it'll just stall out. Nothing. Okay, see that? They both end about the same time frame. Um, we get no data right about the same time. I'm going to pause that, bring this over to the end of the time lapse, and bring that up. So this this stop, see, this this is crazy. This stopped at 2258 UTC. This stopped at 2230. 28 minutes difference there, guys. And they're both not no longer giving us any data right now. So that it could be it could be the solar storm. Okay? I'm not saying that it's not. But at the same time, man, you know, we should be able to, you know, you would think they could uh they should be able to get the data during a solar storm. That's the whole purpose of them being out there. So this is that third CME I showed you guys over there on seeds that we seen just the beginning of it and then they cut they cut it no data after that. Let me show it to you here. I'm gonna back it up. Now watch watch over over here. See it lift right off. Now it went on out into space, guys, and that's a pretty decent size one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up to here. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to zoom in. And watch it. Here it comes. Okay. So that's all we get, man. And and that's it's unfortunate that it's like that because it, you know, I really wish they that didn't happen because we could see a lot more if they would just update the stupid thing.
um, and they're not. And again, it could be the space weather conditions causing that stuff, guys. I'm not saying that it can't, but all that stuff wrapped up together, especially with the CME tracker not doing anything, doing that weird thing. I might not have even said anything unless I seen that, because that's just so strange. Like, we don't see it ever do that. And with all the stuff going on, you know, have to wonder. So we're going to take a look at what this thing's doing to our magnetosphere, okay? Um, again, the sun's off to the right on this one. And, you know, what we're seeing here, guys, again, it would probably be expected during increased solar wind or a solar storm. Okay? But I do want you guys to see this. Now, this tool is updating. So I have to say that. That is kind of a checkbox for a pro. Okay? It's not a con. So at least one of these are, are showing something. Okay? So, again, this one can't show you, like, in detail what a CME looks like, but it can show you our, the magnetosphere and how it's reacting. That's what this is showing you. So I'm going to grab the slide bar because sometimes I can show things better that way. And you know, we're kind of compressed anyway. You see that out front? That big bow out front is called our bow echo. And if it gets near that dotted line, that's the satellite orbit line for a lot of our satellites. Okay? So if you see this, and, it, and if you if you can picture like particles moving, okay, it would cause like that ripple effect we're seeing in the back. See that right there? See how it shoots out a little bit? Now some of that could be us acting like a capacitor also. We get all that energy in and we got to let it go. So, you know, some of that could be that. But typically if it's a capacitor type of issue, we wouldn't see much coming from the front. Because we wouldn't need it. We would already have had that energy here. And then it let it go. And what a capacitor is guys. Is basically. It, it's a power bank that holds. Uh, energy. Or electricity at least here on our planet. And when it gets too. It can, it can only hold so much. And then it has to let it go. And the earth is similar to that. In that instance. Not exactly but close. So this is uh, just so I can show you guys what we would expect during a solar storm. That's kind of what we would expect. Okay. Um, it's pretty intense. I mean, I'll, I'll say that. You can see the pressure build around. Okay. It gets, it gets into the satellite line. So, you know, satellites could be affected by this or what have you. But, yeah, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, you know, the Schumann Resonance isn't doing much right now. I uh, haven't seen it do anything here for a few days. So, yeah. But I'll try to come back later on and give you an update on this geomagnetic storm. So, uh, have a good day, guys. God bless. Yahushua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.